2020 has been a bit sh** so far, hasn't it? Fortunately, we have video games as a release and the variety of a subscription model like Xbox Game Pass has been perfect to remove yourself from all the crazy stuff that's going on in the world right now. Microsoft is witnessing Game Pass's success firsthand, and as a result, they seem to be doubling down on the subscription model moving forward. At the recent Xbox Game Showcase, Phil Spencer said that every game we saw at the showcase is coming to Xbox Game Pass. It's clear Microsoft is making a huge commitment to Game Pass and game subscriptions moving forward which is why I'm making this video. And it's also what my channel is built around. So this is Video Game Subscription Wars, if you're new, um, where I cover every game on every video game subscription to see which is the best and help you decide which one you like and which games to play on that subscription. So if you're new, please consider subscribing and drop a like on this video. I would really appreciate it. So for this Xbox Game Pass 2020 review, I wanna take a look at the lifespan of Game Pass because even though it's new, it's been around for a couple of years. So we're first going to look at how Game Pass came to be and the progress it's made in the two years it's been around, the current state it's in and all its many forms, and where it could go in the future given the introduction of xCloud streaming and the Xbox Series X. So I'll put the link to any sources for stats and figures I pull out uh, my ass, no, <laughs> uh, for any stats I mention in this video. So I'm going to take you back in time a couple of years to when Xbox Game Pass was just a little baby in the womb and we could all touch each other. <laughs> Not inappropriately, just we could appropriately touch people back then. Xbox Game Pass was born in early 2017 with a small games catalogue, um, primarily as a service for Xbox Insider members. And then later that year, it was released to Xbox Gold subscribers and finally the general public. It had just a small smattering of games, and I can't find the game list back then exactly, but this video from June 2017 must have been one of the first. And looking through it, it's predominantly previous-gen Xbox 360 titles. Decent games, but more backwards compatibility focused, which makes sense because at the time Microsoft was trialing a new backwards compatibility feature, and I think Xbox Game Pass at the beginning was primarily uh, a way to play older-gen Xbox games on your Xbox One, which is the same way PlayStation Now started with its library of PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 games and only recently has it started to bring on big, big titles from the current PS4 generation. The difference with Game Pass is that in January 2018, Microsoft announced that its first party titles will release on Game Pass the same day as their physical release which is huge, really. There were already Xbox exclusives on Game Pass, like Gears of War, but this was the first time Microsoft switched to a forward-thinking strategy. Rare's Sea of Thieves is the first first-party title added to Xbox Game Pass day one, and although that day one wasn't great, it didn't have a very good release, and it's only now at the point where it feels like a polished game that's very popular and is worth your time. Forza Horizon 4 would follow, which had a much better release, and Gears 5 is the first game I remember that had a big marketing campaign where Xbox Game Pass was almost as important as Gears 5. Moving into 2019, and at E3, Microsoft introduced two new branches to Xbox Game Pass in the PC version and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Now, I'm sure you know the difference between them, but here they are, just in case. And this was Microsoft, you know, extending Game Pass to a wider audience, especially with the addition of PC players and cross-play between the two. So that brings us into 2020, and as I mentioned, at the recent Xbox Game Showcase, every single game that was featured coming to Xbox Series X and Xbox One will come to Game Pass as well. It was also just announced that xCloud, which is Microsoft's game streaming service, will come to Xbox Game Pass on the 15th of September to any Android device, whether that's a smartphone or a tablet. Microsoft have said that it will come to iOS sometime in the future, we don't know when exactly, and I've also seen some stuff saying the contrary, um, but we don't know at the moment. But if you're on Android, as of the 15th of September, you can stream your games on your phone at no extra cost if you have Game Pass. One thing worth knowing with xCloud is that you need a newer gen Xbox controller to hook up to your Android. Now, I don't mean the Pro controller, but there are actually two different versions of the Xbox One controller. I'm not sure of the cutoff point where they stopped making the old one, but if you have the base Xbox One model, like I do, um, those controllers won't work 
with your phone, which is what I realized uh, when I was on the preview program for xCloud. So I still haven't been able to try it yet. I think it's because there's a little Bluetooth module in the newer Xbox controllers or something. But if you want to use xCloud, you will need this generation of Xbox controller or beyond. So that's where we're at right now. And I think even though Game Pass has only been around for about three years, the progress it's made is pretty huge. And like I mentioned, PlayStation now has a similar beginnings where it was mainly a backwards compatibility service where you could have a selection of older games in one library. The difference I think is now Game Pass has gone on to become a genuine alternative to how you play games. PlayStation now, I think, is not quite at that position yet. But that's, a, that's something for another video. If we look at the Xbox Game Pass library right now, there are still a slate of games that you would pay full price for if you went to buy this online or in a store. And the variety of genres is something that's worth noting as well. You have sprawling single player campaigns, you have big massively multiplayer online RPGs, you have multiplayer shooters, you have co-op games. They really do cover all the bases that you would want. And if we compare that to the 2017 game library, where you had highlights like Halo 5 and Gears of War Judgment, um, there really is no comparison to the value you get for your Game Pass subscription now compared to then. So we've got bigger games, more games, and a commitment from Microsoft that any of their first party exclusives, and the, let's not forget that the Microsoft Studios is expanding, now has well-renowned game developers like Rare and Obsidian and all the others that I don't know off the top of my head. All these upgrades come at no extra cost to us, which is cool. My point is that Xbox Game Pass's value is crazy good right now. Um, in fact, it's kind of too good. And I don't mean that like I'm an Xbox marketing executive. Oh, it's just too good. People at Xbox have explained the uh, cost to value ratio of Xbox Game Pass right now, and they're actually making a loss. So there have been interviews with Microsoft people and they've explained how Game Pass isn't a moneymaker right now. Um, but what they're doing is getting people involved in the Game Pass subscription and over time that recurring revenue is going to bring them a profit. So I'll just paraphrase um, some of the stuff that was mentioned. Um, they said the most powerful marketing is word of mouth marketing. If one Game Pass subscriber goes and tells one of their closest friends you have to get Game Pass, that's more effective than any marketing I, as in Xbox, can do. And ultimately we think long term that's the right thing for the business. In the short term, yes, Game Pass isn't a big profit play, but we think long term it works out good for everybody. And I totally get this. I know I have told my friends about Game Pass when the one pound or one dollar for three months deal was going on, because that's just insane value for the amount of games you get for that price. Like, I mean, I made this YouTube channel <laughs> about game subscriptions and where I think they're going, because I do believe the value they can give you is better than the traditional purchasing method of buying games. So they got me, <laughs> they got me good. You're welcome for your free advertising Microsoft, by the way, hit me up. Let's also remember that this is Microsoft and they can take this monetary hit with Game Pass right now. I don't think they're gonna be struggling just because they've been running this super cheap deal to get new Game Pass subscribers in. Um, this is a trillion dollar company uh, that makes $320 million in revenue per day and makes $120 million net profit per day. <laughs> ah, ah, and I'm broke as f Anyway, I do have just one issue with Game Pass at the moment personally, and that's been my experience with the Xbox Game Pass for PC app, the beta app. And I say beta because it runs like a PC <laughs> Like, I know it's in beta and I think they're making sure <laughs> that people know that it's a beta because I myself have had problems with it and pretty much everyone I've played games with has had problems with it. It's, it's the integration between the Microsoft Store and the Xbox for PC app just really doesn't work. Um, there are some major problems and, and there is an inability to fix problems with the Microsoft Store because it's a Windows 10 app you cannot uninstall it and reinstall it. So if you have problems, they are kind of inbuilt into your PC. <laughs> so you really can't do anything about it. I was so desperate to play Halo 3 that I did a clean reinstall of Windows and that fixed it. But I don't expect anyone to, <laughs> to go to that length just to play a bit of Halo. This is just my experience and I can't speak for everyone, but 
from what I've experienced, from what my close friends have experienced, and from what people on Reddit say, I just feel like there are some, some key problems that Microsoft aren't addressing yet. And hopefully they get fixed in the, in the future, but we'll just have to wait and see. But apart from that problem, and I won't call it a minor issue because I do think for certain games, it can leave them completely unplayable. Um, but still for the most part, especially if you're mainly into single player games, for the most part, Xbox Game Pass is killing it. So we're in a pretty good spot with Game Pass, but what's next? Um, and it's interesting to think where Game Pass might go in the future. I think the Xbox Series X will be predominantly led by Game Pass, but not only that, it might the console might hinge on its success. And Microsoft has said they are prioritizing Game Pass over physical console sales for the next generation, which if you go back three years, that kind of statement would just seem completely ludicrous. And it also suggests that at some point in the future, Xbox Game Pass could be the most profitable Xbox based thing that Microsoft have. Again, like just the, the transition that the industry is potentially going through is, is huge. You know, the same way that Netflix completely revolutionized how we consume film and, and TV and that kind of media. Like I do think the same thing is gonna happen at some point with video game subscriptions and streaming. Now, that might mean the price goes up. A lot of the loss that Microsoft is um, claiming because of Game Pass is probably due to that introductory deal, um, which is only for new Game Pass members, but still, the, the, the loss you would take, I keep doing this, but it's because Microsoft is so damn rich. Um, the loss you would take on Game Pass um, the normal subscription that you're then getting, you know, it should be 33 pounds essentially, and you're giving it to them for one pound. That's a clear maths, you know, there's a clear disparity right there. And Microsoft over time will obviously want to get rid of that. So that deal for Xbox Game Pass isn't gonna stick around forever. And I guess eventually Microsoft are expecting all of their 10 million subscribers to pay the 10 pound 99 or, or 14 dollars 99 per month. Because if we do that maths while we're at it, um, I'm not a trillion dollar company, but that figure sounds pretty good to me um, per month. But maybe that price goes up with the next generation as they add next gen games, which we know are going to be more expensive. Um, and game streaming, you know, if, if they believe that the value of Game Pass as a subscription is improving and they know that people will are, are enjoying the service, then that price might go up. But I don't think it will be any more than, you know, net, the Netflix subscription has gone up over the years. Obviously, I hope the price remains the same, but I don't think if it does go up, I don't think it will be too dissimilar from the general price hike we get with the next generation of consoles. Like, and remember that new next gen console games to buy physical will be $70 and maybe even more if it's the digital version. So, which is just so much. That's, that's gonna be at least five months of Game Pass. So is that maths right? 75, yeah, it's pretty close. So I realized I may not have given a definitive statement for an Xbox Game Pass 2020 review. So it's that, it's f lovely. But I think more importantly is what Xbox Game Pass has done or will do for Microsoft. I don't care if you're the biggest Microsoft Xbox fanboy in the room, Xbox lost this generation's console wars, like flat out. All you need to do is look at the PS4 sales versus X1, Xbox One sales and it's clear as day. They haven't had anywhere near the level of success in terms of exclusive titles and just generally it hasn't been that close. But to Microsoft credit, they have t changed tact with how they market Xbox games, Xbox consoles and the Game Pass model. And I think, I think it's gonna pay off for them massively, which is good because um, that company's in desperate need of, of, of some cash flow, you know? Um, and I'm sure that the money, the, the additional income that Microsoft gets will be spread out evenly among um, the entire company, you know, the, the factory floor workers. I'm sure they will see um, pay rises from all the, the millions of dollars that that uh, Game Pass brings in and it won't go to the, um, the, the, how the wealthy elites. I think I went a bit too social commentary in a in a video game review. Just focus on your controller and shut and you shut up. Don't talk above your pay grade. I don't have a pay grade. I'm broke.
Anyway, if you're excited about Game Pass, please leave a like on this video. That would mean the world to me. That would mean more than a monetary sum. And if you're excited about video game subscriptions, like I am, please subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with every little thing that happens concerning video game subscriptions, video game streaming, Xbox Game Pass, PlayStation Now, and all that hullabaloo. I cover every video game subscription, so even if you might be locked in with Game Pass, remember that if you have a PC, you can play any video game subscription. It'd be worth checking out PlayStation Now and Origin Access. They have a very good library of games for a good price. They're a little bit cheaper than Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, around the same price as the PC version. Um, and if you've missed out on PlayStation exclusives, then PlayStation now uh, lets you play those games on PC. They don't stick around quite the same way as they do on Game Pass. Uh, they rotate them in and out a bit, but this year I've been able to play games like Spider-Man, Horizon Zero Dawn, Control, um, and Uncharted was on there. God of War has been on there. So, you know, if you don't have a PlayStation 4 like I do, don't, um, then PlayStation Now is a pretty cool option for playing some of those exclusives. So thanks so much for watching guys. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Um, if you like this video, please drop a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Um, and if you're an Xbox fan, I recently started a series. There's only one video in there at the moment. Um, ranking every Xbox Game Pass game. So I looked at every open world game on Xbox Game Pass and ranked them in a way that isn't as long and as boring as you might think, because there were like 33 open world games but uh, the video is like 15 minutes so if you've got 15 minutes free please check that out thanks so much for watching really appreciate it and i'll see you on the next one goodbye